Hey, I'm Andres, and today we are going to see the capabilities of Microsoft Power Platform by diving into a real-world scenario. We will rely on the example of an elevator maintenance company that has a Power Apps where they can manage their accounts, incidents, repair service schedule, and have real-time reports in the same place. I love to talk for hours about the capabilities of Power Platform, but let's limit the content to the following chapters. First, how navigation works in a model-driven app. Second, how to filter data and customize our views. Third, how to input data via standard forms. Four, business process flows. We will see it better in the video. Five, how to export and import data with Microsoft Excel. In the end, no configuration needed because everything are Microsoft technologies. Six, how to leverage custom interfaces with two examples. Roster management with a drag and drop functionality, very handy, and programming recurring services, just like in Outlook when you configure recurring events. And last, a report made with Power BI connected to the data of the application in real time. Now, let's get to it. The navigation in this type of Power Apps is very straightforward. We're always going to find this navigation pane over here in the left, which we can, of course, make it smaller, like so with this uh, button. And uh, just clicking the different options, we're going to see the different uh, pages that we can access to. Now, the typical page here is this table like view where we have uh, diff different rows and different columns and basically we are always going to find here this button ribbon here we can see the default buttons but this is completely customizable so we can add our own buttons we can also hide these and create visibility rules we'll, we'll see an example later and we can already see some of the out of the box functionalities that make model driven apps so great which are for example the export import uh, to excel visualizing emailing them and automating also with uh, microsoft power automate when we are in such a screen where we can see the different roads uh, in a table here in this case accounts our customers I have configured here for you to see an example, this hierarchical structure where you can see all the, in this case, related elevators for this customer. We can navigate, see the different columns over here, and also get inside this elevator to see what's what. The different here, you see the open cases, the address, and some other information from the elevator. Now let's, take a look at how we can filter this data and it's, this is actually very easy we can just use the filter by in if this is available in all the columns on the table and if you are familiar with uh, excel or any other spreadsheet programs here well it says it all you we can just uh, for example filter by contains and it will just filter the data very easily and very mm, intuitively the user interface here is very easy to use. Now, of course, we can also apply filters after filters. So for example, if we here in the email say, okay, give me one that contains, I think it was Fred. Yeah, so here we see, we just nailed down the search to this one record. Now, of course, we can also, let's say, create our own views. And this is very interesting. If you are familiar to other, maybe uh, ERP or the software like SharePoint, pr uh, probably you already know this concept, which are views. Views are, let's say, pre-filtered um, pre that you can access. Okay, here we have all these views pre-configured for us uh, that come with this table. And of course, they can be hidden, but they are available right now for me. And I can just uh, go over and pick this table, uh, these different views, and it will already pre fill some, uh, pre filter the data according to what is configured in that particular view. And of course, we can create our own views. So let's, for example, go again and filter by ink incorporated here okay and what we can do is here save this as a new view and let's name it very uh, yeah conveniently includes ink and then hit save now we have this new personal view and you will notice here this uh, icon of this uh, little person and this in the information button it says personal view versus there are other ones 
uh, say system view. Of course, we can also add columns and we can add columns to the view from the table itself and from related data. Uh, related data, for example, here we can see an example, uh, the email column for our primary contact for this account. So accounts have contacts. Imagine, yeah, an, uh, a company, a, a customer company, it will, well, actual people it will work there and you can store them in a CRM. And this is what we are showcasing here. So the primary contact for that customer is this gen at example.com and we can see the email here instead of needing to navigate into the uh, inside the this this form and see all the contacts and last uh, we can apply filters in a more complex and complete manner here you can see that we have a uh, different ways of adding rows and conditions and now we equal does not contain and we can have groups with and and or and these logical operations here where uh, we will be able to construct a very complex query to the database and this is very helpful when you want to just drill down your data to what we uh, you want to to work with at a certain point and of course a good practice would be to save it as a view uh, which can be personal, but you can also share your views here in the manage and share views option. My uh, personal view, I can share it with other users. Uh, I can delete it, deactivate it, etc. And even, I don't know, maybe I want to download the, uh, this fetch XML. This is, let's say, the internal format of the view. You can download it, store it elsewhere, and delete it just, you know, for the future. Now, let's see how to input data. Um, let's pick Acme for an example. We enter here and we'll see a form here. Forms can be very complete and very complex as much as we want. Uh, really, here we can see different areas with different inputs. For example, we are grouping here all the address inputs, here the basic information, and search, for example, we can display also related records, all the contacts that are related to this customer. So Acme has this uh, gentrinary as a contact, and of course, we can create new, for example, leveraging this quick create form, which, which, which we can configure to also get this uh, data already pre-populated using the information from uh, our uh, existing customer, right? So the, the address, uh, the net, of course, the, the account, the business phone, etc. Now, uh, another important thing that we can do here is uh, just see the related data to this account, for example. So all the related tables to the account table, we can see the name of the, the table here, and this is the name of this record, account name. And here we will click into the relate, we will be able to, for example, go to contacts. And this is just another way to navigate through the information inside a model driven app. A very useful feature and actually very cool is the ability to create business process flows. Let's see about that navigating to our cases and get inside this uh, this case, for example. So here, this is important stuff. We can see here uh, a business process flow in action. What this is about is just basically a way to guide users through the different steps to, in this case, solve an incident. Let's create a new one, okay? And let's say, okay, uh, an elevator, elevator stuck at third floor, okay. So uh, what we can do here is, well, instead of do what I was going to do, which is uh, fill all the data like a crazy person, just I will follow the steps that guide me through this, the, you know, solving a case that may come from a phone or from, a, I don't know, from any of our support contact channels. And here, I, what I would do is, okay, uh, answer what is uh, apps asked for me in this step, which is actually what this issue is about incident clearly not a billing question for sure and who is calling okay let's say that Scott Wright is calling and priority is certain because the guy is stuck in the elevator right so let's hit save and go step by step for example you know clicking next stage and then it will automatically go to the next stage and then here affect resource it, you can filter on the related uh, elevators for this customer 
etc. Now, what if uh, you tell me, okay, but it was not an incident, it was a, a billing question. Okay, take, uh, pay attention here. If I click here and change it, set as active. You see that the whole business process flow changed. If I change here the type of issue, okay, I configure it to change the steps to solve this case because, of course, it's not going to be the same uh, tackling or dealing with an incident that just a question, billing or general, right? Uh, and this is very important because we can tailor our business processes and guide our users to solve or go through them very easily so that they don't get lost and at least they inform or input the most important data. Another important feature that we couldn't just leave here and you are probably already asking for it is the export and import using Microsoft Excel. This of course is uh, very important just to, I don't know if you want to uh, do some analysis or reporting on, on, on the data and this is going to take the actual view that you are using. Let's, for example, export to Excel. And here we have different options, dynamic worksheet. This is going to use dynamically the data. So if you, for example, change the data, you can dynamically load in the Excel so that uh, you have the uh, an updated uh, sheet with the data. And um, just for the moment, let's uh, get the static worksheet. Okay, if we open in, Uh, let's enable it. Editing here, we can actually edit the data very easily with uh, drop downs because it's already configured. For example, let's say that all these are urgent. And when just uh, you cannot only limit yourself to export the data, you can actually import it using Excel. So I don't know, maybe you want to uh, modify in bulk some of the cases or you want to import some other data from, I don't know, contacts, resources, accounts, whatever it is, you can import it using Excel. Of course, also CSV and XML, but let's just take a stick with Excel here. And the uh, way to do this is actually very easy. Let's choose a newly created file. I think it was this one, right? And just hit next. Here you can also, a very interesting, review the mapping, okay, why this is important, because maybe you have your own Excel and the uh, columns, this would be the table columns and this would be in blue, the Excel columns. So maybe your Excel columns are named differently than the actual columns on of the table. So here is where you would select and these are the columns that uh, Microsoft uh, Word platform is detecting from your Excel and here you just map it so your short description is short description etc and then just finish import and it will load your data. Now we've seen the regular or out of the box functionalities that we can create or configure in Modern Apps but let's see a more tailored experience and what we're going to do is just dive into this page Okay, and here we are going to see a custom page. Custom pages are a way to create, let's say, more tailored user experiences inside Model Driven Apps. And this is actually a Canvas application. And we are leveraging here a drag and drop uh, component where we can drag and drop these uh, services, which are for basically in this case, a monthly maintenance for this customer. And it could be any other service, like for example, the repair that we were uh, seeing <laughs> before with this stock person, the third floor. So here, of course, I'm just alone here, but you could see more technicians if we had them here. And uh, this would be a very, very, Easy, to, easy way to just schedule the different services for a given day. Of course, we can navigate through the different days and, uh, you know, uh, go uh, in the different in the different dates. Another example I've got prepared here is for actually services. If we jump to a recurrent service, uh, I've created this custom button. So you see that the bottom ribbon over here can be customized. And this schedule recurrency is a button that I created for the re uh, service type recurrent services. So the services that are recurrent, for example, are regular maintenance. Now, um, if I change it to incident and hit save, I don't see the button anymore because incidents are not recurrent. They just happen once, hopefully, right? So if I change again to recurrent, I hit save, I will see this schedule recurrency button again, and this is going to open this page. 
And this custom page here, this is uh, like a, a model or a dialogue where I can configure, okay, if, let's say since uh, next, uh, next, uh, what's Wednesday, uh, Thursday, no? Uh, every, I don't know, six weeks on Thursdays until, I don't know, and maybe end of contract next, uh, next, I don't know, February. I hit save, this will configure this recurrent maintenance, um, service so that every six weeks it will be get it will get programmed for tuesday now uh, this is well a custom page leveraging here a functionality that we wouldn't be able to do with the out of the box functionalities and it can resemble uh, the outlook experience actually when we want to schedule recurrent events so we can actually here do any kind of let's say pixel perfect user interfaces to suit the needs of our users what you are seeing here is a very, I think the colors are very ugly, but I just wanted to have the same pinky color as the default power apps colors. Uh, but anyway, here we have a report which is created with Power BI and it's getting the data in real time from our application. So we have created this application from scratch. We have loaded some data, we are using it. And now what we have here is uh, a nice overview on, for example, here we have the ranking of incidents per elevator. So we see that this elevator is giving us six incidents. The rest of them are pretty okay. We can also see here the different uh, customers and how many elevators they, they have in our, uh, as, as our customers. And we see that they, we have 74 in total. We uh, see here the map where we have some, um, well, our elevators are here, some in Spain, UK, South Africa, and North America. Uh, and of course, uh, an aggregated view for distribution of the cases over the year in the different months. And we can see here they are separated or classified in the different uh, typology of the cases, the billing questions, general questions, incidents. And of course, we could also filter by year and, you know, uh, we can even have more pages. We have just one page in this report, but you get the idea. We can build real-time reports with Power BI and that get the data directly from the same, let's say, database that we are using for this uh, in, in with this application. One thing that we haven't talked about, and you may be actually wondering, is what about security? So model driven applications, well, any application can be also model driven, doesn't matter. And any of the stuff that we do using the Power Platform, if we are based uh, upon Dataverse, which if you are using a model driven application, you most probably are, you can leverage is what is called role-based access control, which is a way of configuring security, which is enterprise grade. Any great ERP, just like SAP, Dynamics, of course, uh, I don't know, Sage, they use this approach. And with this approach, what you do is, for example, let's say that, uh, okay, technicians can, let's say, read accounts, but they cannot edit them. And they can see the cases, but only edit and work with the cases that are assigned to them. So uh, in, in contracts, for example, the um, the managers are the only ones who are going to be able to see this overview report in Power BI. So these kind of configurations are really security configurations. And when using Dataverse and with, well, with Power BI uh, also, in the Power BI service, of course, we can leverage these uh, roles as a framework to limit who sees what, who can edit what, and access to what resource. And this is very important because when you are uh, thinking on building such solutions, security is something that you don't want to play around. Thank you for making it to the end of the video. I hope this was a good example for you to imagine the great value that Microsoft Technologies can bring to your business. Please let me know in the comments any questions you may have. And if you want to support my, uh, my channel, me making more videos, please hit the like and subscribe. Thank you very much.